The Volvo brand has completely revamped itself in the past four years. And the XC60 I have here is a perfect example of their advancements. The technology is intuitive, the looks are sophisticated, and the details are, uh, detailed. That said, there are still some frustrating elements to this little Volvo, but I think that this should make sense to a lot of luxury buyers, and I'll show you why. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel so you can help me take this to the next level. Thank you. Now back to the review. Now at the front of the XC60, you have the big and bold Volvo corporate grille. And really, it has that fit and the polish of a luxury vehicle. The Thor's hammer headlights look awesome. And you can get steering responsive headlights if you choose the advanced package like I have here. That will also grant you fog lights, a headlight pressure washer, cause you know, Volvo, and an around view camera system. That's actually one thing I find really odd with the XC60. It's quite easy to equip the base momentum trim with more features than the top inscription model. Trims are a mere suggestion with the XC60. First, I'll give you guys a breakdown of the trims. You have the Momentum, the R design, and then the Inscription. If you go with the R design, you will get a sportier dark look, and the Inscription gets a more upscale chrome look. Real quick, I'd like to thank Royal Volvo for loaning me this XC60. Royal is a small, honest dealership in Bloomington, Indiana. If you're looking for a new Volvo, check them out. In all outfits, I think that this is just a gorgeous design. Coming alongside the Volvo XC60, you're really not gonna see an abundance of like super crisp or sharp lines, but it's still kept pretty smooth, pretty contemporary. Standard on the Momentum are 18 inch wheels. With $1,000, you can politely ask Volvo to throw on some different wheels like these 20s. Now as a part of the premium package, you're going to get power folding mirrors. I, I think it looks pretty crisp, but again, not overdone. Now at the rear of the Volvo XC60, you have an old Range Rover-esque rear glass. And these taillights are kind of classic Volvo, but with a modern touch. Now this being the premium package, you're gonna have a power rear tailgate. You have two real exhaust pipes, always noteworthy stuff right there. The design of the Volvo XC60 interior is not jaw-dropping. The materials that you interact with feel of quality. However, there are a few low points. There are some questionable buttons, especially on the steering wheel, and the center console area doesn't have as lavish of trim as you would find in the Audi Q5. Still, it's more than competitive. Now, if you don't like this matte looking plastic here, you can actually get like a piano black plastic there too, which I think personally looks better. And I like the stitching, the feel is great. Uh, the big crease here is also kind of neat. Where this Volvo really excels though, is the ergonomics of it. The first thing I'd like to talk about are these seats. They're at least more plush than what you find in an Audi. They're, you know, softer. What I really like about them is how much support you can get out, out of them. The seat bottom really adjusts to a pretty impressive degree. The XC60 seats are comprised of soft leather and padding. Standard with all wheel drive is a heated function. If you hop over to the R design, you will get more aggressive seats wrapped in Napa leather. Optional on the inscription is the luxury package, which grants you massaging ventilated front seats. Want some toasty hands? That's a package. Normally I'd hit you guys with all the features and I hate to let you down, but there are an obscure amount of ways to spec this Volvo. So I'm not going to hit everything here. The silver lining is that you can get a bespoke interior exterior that fits your needs and your wants, no matter what they are. You have soft touch where your elbows rest. You don't have soft touch where your, your knees rest, but I really just like how pretty much everything else is placed. The shifter has this really short, satisfying movement to it. It's got some resistance in there, and it also just looks nice and stubby and traditional. The start stop thing is kind of weird. It's kind of got like that sob position, you know, down here and you twist it. And I almost kind of find myself looking for a dial to control the infotainment system. But all you have down here is just the little drive mode selector that you have to push. You only have two USB ports in here, which I find kind of surprising. Now for the part that really separates the Volvo from its competitors, 
The infotainment system. It's based on a 9-inch display with excellent resolution and good dynamic range. Navigation is an option on our design and momentum. It comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that won't take up the whole screen. But I'm dazzled by the standard UI. One of the segment leaders, if you ask me, while it's definitely the main piece of attraction on this dashboard, it isn't the whole dashboard. It's so quick and snappy. And then you have this super easy to use layout. It's, it's definitely not the most pretty, but there's kind of a no frills feeling to this interface that I, I just enjoy. And then this being the premium package and a Volvo, which this is kind of a main staple feature, you can fold the headrests with one button. All from the touchscreen. And it's a painless process. No digging through settings or through an owner's manual to find these things. It requires a little getting used to because it's quite different from most other systems. However, the standard 12.3 inch driver display is not as intuitive. It's now it's not as easily customizable. It doesn't really show as much information as the Audi virtual cockpit or the Mercedes Benz unit. However, I do like how you can change the theme of it. You can put it to performance, which makes it red. It's interesting, but I wish it had the ability to show more information. But it's at least visually pleasing, just like the metal looking trim accents in here. Something that can be changed to your taste too. Oh, and the front door handles are super solid. Stuff like this helps the Volvo achieve a real luxury vibe. So standard, you're going to have 10 speakers with 200 watts, but this has the 14 speaker Harman Kardon system. It sounds awesome. It's better than what I found in the Harman Kardon system for Subarus, as you'd probably expect. If you want shit your pants sound quality, then get the Bowers and Wilkins system in here. That's gonna be an additional option and it's on the inscription only. Space is plentiful for front seat passengers, even with the standard panoramic sunroof. I had a few inches to spare with headroom. With my seat in the front being in a pretty generous position, I really wouldn't call this too bad. I can still fit behind here. My knees are pretty close. And then headroom for me, being 6'3", is just passable. So overall, I'd say this is pretty good for an SUV of this size. Now, if you step up to the inscription, you'll get four zone climate control. Uh, so right now it's just dual zone. I do have a vent right here. I I'm pretty comfortable back here. Uh, you have soft touch materials where your elbows rest. This has uh, built-in booster seats if you have kids. Seat comfort is still pretty good. I have actually have support where my thighs are because the floor is pretty low. It's really quite cozy back here. I wouldn't have any problems going on a road trip and being stuck in the back seat. We have a fairly okay cargo space back here. For a road trip, four people, maybe a four-day trip, three-day trip, just be fine. Now, it's going to lag behind some of the non-luxury oriented mid-size SUVs like the Honda Passport, Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. But if you compare this to the Audi Q5 and the Mercedes-Benz GLC, you will actually find that this has an edge on those. So now that we've kind of tackled everything regarding the interior and exterior, let's see how the Volvo XC60 drives. The Volvo XC60's driving dynamics makes it a very approachable vehicle. Usually I would use that word when talking about power, which this does not have an excess of. But what I mean is that it's, it's easy to drive in the way that a lot of cars from 10 years ago were. But what gives me that extra set of confidence is a very natural feeling drive. It's not that organic, gluten-free, edge-of-the-seat natural experience that you would get out of a Porsche Cayman. It's natural for a luxury SUV, as in it's predictable, soft, and comfortably numb. It kind of has an old luxury appeal to me. Under the hood, we have a two liter turbo, just like literally every other luxury SUV out there right now. This one makes 250 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Now that torque does come in at 1500 RPMs, but you still have to wait a little bit for that turbo to spool up. Do you want less lag? Well, for $3,500, you can opt for a supercharged and turbocharged T6 that is more responsive, makes 316 horsepower, and gets the same gas mileage. If you want some truck-level torque, 
consider the Polestar optimization. It's $1,300 and available on both the T5 and T6. If you want the most complex Volvo powertrain ever conceived, Volvo offers a T8 version with 400 horsepower and a plug-in hybrid addition to the two liter turbocharged and supercharged four cylinder. If it's me, I'd choose the T5 model because there are less things to go wrong. Zero to 60 for the volume seller T5 all wheel drive that I have here should be in the mid to high sixes. I got 7.5 seconds at an improvised location. Throttle response is adequate. Passing power is on par with the segment. Now this has an eight speed automatic. It's a pretty forgettable transmission, which is what you want with an automatic. It rarely ever makes a shift that I find annoying. You can do a manual shift. You don't have paddle shifters. And you know, whenever you rush it, it's no dual clutch and I'm fine with that because dual clutches usually at lower speeds are less refined. So I would overall call the driving experience refined, yet there are some things that need work, namely uh, the noise coming from the engine. There is a slight worrying noise to it. It brings a little attention to itself while driving. I wouldn't knock a car for this normally, but when the rest of the experience is subdued, this is noticeable. One thing that I noticed really quick is how quiet this is. It's easy to tell for me because I can hear all of my equipment rattling. <laughs> Ride quality is overall pretty good. It still has a pretty decent amount of body roll. Now, obviously this is an SUV. It's, it rides a little higher up. And around corners, it's not the most inspiring. Uh, the body roll isn't, again, it's not horrendous. It's just other vehicles in the class seem to be a little bit more flat through corners. I will have to say, I, again, I, I want to commend this for its comfort. It's more plush than the Audi Q5. And you can add air suspension on the inscription model for $1,800 if you want the best. But I firmly believe this ride comfort will impress shoppers in the segment as it sits. It's stiff enough to be composed through road imperfections, but soft enough to not be confused as sporty. Now, I touched on this a little bit earlier with the ergonomics, um, but I'd like to point out again just how comfortable the driving position is. The thigh support is great. I also enjoy having the shifter right here. It's like the perfect height to rest your hand on. Your elbows are even. Uh, I think Volvo really studied people whenever they made this interior and that paid off. I also enjoy the pretty large windscreen. Having that low dashboard really makes me feel like I'm higher up than I really am. I can see out of this thing pretty well. Which adds to the aforementioned natural feeling. This being a Volvo, we have some intermittent headlight washers. Oh, and the most calculated windshield washer system I've ever seen. Safety is a high priority with Volvos. The XC60 is a top safety pick and it appears to go beyond that. Standard, you get forward collision mitigation with steering support, a lane keeping aid, road sign information, and oncoming lane mitigation. Blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert comes in the premium package for the momentum, and adaptive cruise comes in the advanced package for all trims. Honestly, the safety systems here are top notch and deserve their own video. And the steering is not so quick that it's starting to feel darty, um, but it also doesn't feel too slow. Now it is pretty numb and it is definitely on the the light side, it's, it builds up okay at least. And you can put this thing into a sport mode, which right now I'm in. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I f maybe feel a little bit in the steering wheel. The revs picked up, so it downshifted a little bit. The dampening itself is just, it's tailored for a more comfortable drive, which is why you buy one of these. You don't buy these to rip it around on a back road. This is a rough back road with windy tight corners I'm not complaining about the fact that it could be more sporty. I'm actually just appreciating the fact that it's sheltering me from all of these hard bumps. Really, it's got to be a massive pothole uh, to, for it to be jarring. I still do feel it comes through the cabin. It's not a boat. Overall, I'd say if there is, if it was trying to strike a balance between sport and comfort, it definitely leans on the comfort side of things. Volvo has its priorities straight. Now for the most conflicting aspect of owning a luxury car, reliability. 
This one surprised me though. According to Consumer Reports, the XC60 is average. I wasn't finding any consistent issues. Carcomplaints.com isn't showing much of anything either. The 110 cars.com reviews are overwhelmingly positive and the issues that people do have are relatively minor. KBB had more negative results, but only 21 reviews. And I searched the 2018 model year, so hopefully issues from then have been worked out. Resale is also surprisingly adequate. Not quite Lexus levels, but better than the Audi Q5, which is surprising since some other Volvos depreciate like used underwear. Overall, if you're highly concerned about resale and reliability, with some reports of power equipment failure and in-car electronics problems, I'd probably still steer you towards a Acura RDX or a Lexus RX 350. If that isn't a top priority, but still a major factor, I would personally advise a T5 as it doesn't have the extra supercharger or electric motor of the T6 and T8. I'd also forego the air suspension for those looking for a long-term, dependable luxury SUV. However, top-notch reliability and resale is usually not the highest priority with a luxury purchase. The Volvo delivers a relaxing, fresh product to the market. It's easy to drive, quite comfortable, reasonably quiet, gorgeous inside and out, while providing a no-nonsense infotainment experience. Yeah, it lags behind others in terms of sporty driving dynamics, but I think the XC60 knows its role and plays it pretty damn well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the review, then please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.